Hi everyone, Matt from the Pre-Sales team at Net Support here and today I've got a video for you where we're going to be taking a look at troubleshooting issues with the name and connectivity server. So I'm going to cover off sort of common problems that might prevent your tutor console from connecting to your students when you're using the name and connectivity server. So if we look at my setup here, um, I've got my um, name and connectivity server installed on this virtual machine here. This one here is got my tutor console and I've got two students um, that are linked to my uh, my tutor, which at the moment aren't connecting. So if we open up the tutor console. And all of my students should be um, in a room uh, that I've called room one. So you can see there I've got my room one connected. But if we launch here what you'll see is that nothing has connected up. So let's start and do some troubleshooting. So we're going to start first of all on the server. And when you've got the name and connectivity uh, server installed, what you'll see um, in the system tray of your um, of your machine where you've got this installed is this little icon here um, for the name and connectivity server. And I don't know if you can make out, there's actually a yellow exclamation mark um, against the, uh, the icon there. So that's telling me that the name and connectivity server isn't running. So first thing to do in that scenario, if we just click on run, and I'm going to load up the services, and the service we're looking for is Gateway 32. So I can see that the uh, the service for the name and connectivity server is not actually running. So nothing's going to connect because nothing can uh, connect to my name and connectivity server. So I'm going to simply start that up there. And I can see that is uh, is now running. And you can see I've got a little uh, green tick there. So that indicates everything is working correctly. So let's jump back to our tutor and see if that's uh helped and it's uh, it's not I've still got no students connecting so we're going to need to do a little bit more digging so if we go back to the server here and I'm going to right click on this icon and I'm going to click on the open option so this will show me everything that is connected to my name connectivity server and I can see I've got two devices connected so this top one is my tutor console and you can see that that um, is um, in room one and this is one of my students and you can see that that's also in room one um, but there's a typo here so these need to match exactly and this student is identifying itself as being in room one without a space so that's probably the problem with this uh, this particular student here so let's jump onto that device and correct that so I'm going to go in here. So I'm doing a manual configuration here. I'm, you know, if you're using group policy, you might need to uh, correct this via your, uh, your group policy. But my uh, settings are um, are being set um, with the um, with the uh, the configuration file. So I'm going to go into room, and I can see here. Just need to enter a space there. Click on OK. Click to uh, to restart the service. Give that a second. So that's all restarted, and I can see immediately that's popped the student toolbar up. And if we go back to our tutor console, we can see we've now got a, uh, a connection to uh, to Oliver Smith. So we're fifty percent there. We've solved the connection issue with uh, with one of our students. Now the other student, if we jump back to the name and connectivity server it's not even um, connecting here so there's there's a connection issue somewhere so first thing I'm going to do is right click again and click on the configure connectivity server and I'm just going to double check the port I'm using so I've got this set up to be using port 3085 so let's jump onto the student that's not connecting and let's take a look and see what um, what port that student is using. So I can see here, if I just go into uh, configure, I can see the port is correct. Um, that's the correct name for my uh, for my demo server. Now I know the network um, configuration is correct and this is working, um, but uh, if the port's correct, you might want to sort of uh, do a ping and just check that this machine uh, has got network connectivity and it can uh, it can see um, the server there. But I, I know that uh, this is all correct. So these um, th these these parts here uh, aren't the uh, aren't the issue. So we need to uh, delve a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go back to my server and 
Let me just uh, close this window down here. What I'm going to do is look in the name and connectivity server logs because um, this might give me a bit more of a clue as to what's going on. So you can find the logs if you go into uh, the C drive, program files x86, then you're going to want to go into common files, NSL, connectivity server, and if I scroll down, um, you'll see I've got this GW001 log. Now, these logs um, will, will kind of grow and um, eventually when they get to a certain size, it will create a new one. So you might have one that's called you know, GW002, 03, so on and so forth. So you, you kind of want to um, check the um, modified date. So you want to uh, sort of look for the most recent log file. But we're going to jump in here and let's scroll down to the bottom and have a look and... We can see here um, I've got an error. So I've got a security check failed for client S1 VMO3, which is the machine not connecting. Um, that security check failed suggests that the key is wrong. So the key that uh, it needs to authorize itself with the name and connectivity server is incorrect, and that's why it's not correct uh, connecting. So let's try and fix that. So if we jump back to our uh, student machine, and if I click on set, and I'm just going to re-enter the key in here. And click on OK there, and OK again. Um, just a, a little pointer here as well, um, just while we're in this uh, client configurator. If you're not sure whether you're applying the settings um, locally on the machine or you're pushing them out via group policy, um, if you load up this client configurator uh, and these options are greyed out, so this button is disabled, that means the settings are being applied uh, via group policy. So you're going to need to make the change um, in the, uh, the relevant group policy. Um, but uh, if they're all enabled here, uh, it means the settings are coming from the local machine. So again, it could be that your group policy is correct, but um, you know, it's maybe not uh, applying um, to the relevant machine uh, and the settings you think um, that are being applied actually um, aren't being. So you can tell a little bit from this um, the, uh, the client configurator here. But that hopefully now should have corrected that problem. So it's going to save those settings, give it uh, a moment to reconnect. And there we go, that's reconnected. And again, the student toolbars popped up there, so I know that's working. And if I go back to my tutor, you can see I've got both my students in there, so everything is working correctly. So hopefully that was uh, useful, helping you troubleshoot some uh, basic connectivity uh, issues there with your name and connectivity server. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again in the next video.